No, it's okay. Okay, I'm compelled to begin with uh, condolences to uh, J- Japanese people, whose uh, imaginable suffering continues. Their suffering speaks to our common humanity and to our recognition that their suffering is our suffering. We are here today because our collective response to willful destruction of a human spirit by the tyrannies of the world is not the same as our collective response to natural disasters. Let me present this situation and appeal for help. Since last February, the Chinese government has launched its biggest clampdown on dissidents and human rights activists in the decade. So far, about 20 have been officially arrested and more than 100 put under house arrest or made missing. The Chinese government has once again outperformed itself in its long-standing history of human rights violations. Although human rights is decreed part of the Constitution, the Chinese government has never intended to honor this commitment. As a result, we see all kinds of human rights violations in China. Vast numbers of prisoners of conscience are imprisoned. Thousands of Falun Gong practitioners perished under persecution. Ethnic groups and religious groups are systematically repressed and there is no free flow of information on the internet. For a long time, the Chinese government has been enforcing forced abortions, large-scale illegal evictions, and the farmers were forced to lose their lands without compensation or sell their lands at low prices to government and officials. These are currently taking place in China, and it is enough to remind us of the severity of Chinese human rights issues. Last October, the Nobel Peace Prize was announced to be awarded to the jailed Chinese writer Liu Xiaobo. His wife, Liu Xia, designated me to be the liaison to the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony on his behalf. However, not long after her request, Liu Xia was subjected to house arrest by the Chinese government. For five months now, I have not been able to get in touch with her. Since then, none of the family members have seen Liu Xiaobo either. I do not know what Liu Xiaobo is undergoing. I don't know what Liu Xia is undergoing. I don't know when I will be in touch with either of them again. The only thing I can do today is to pray for them call the world to their attention and to support them. For those in their situation, every single voice of justice is precious. The recent uprisings in North Africa and the Middle East remind us that the desire and the need for freedom is as universal and fundamental as the physical need for food, clothing, and shelter. Long repressed peoples are mastering the modern tools of internet, the social media of Facebook and Twitter, and the locus of power and the shifting from tyrants to the people. These tools are enabling people to organize and to communicate, releasing the tsunami of long repressed calls for freedom and justice across the globe. If we miss this opportunity to nurture this call for freedom, our indifference will condemn our fellow human beings decades more of darkness and despair. I know this from uh, my personal experience uh, because in 1989, one million of uh, my countrymen peacefully assembled in Tiananmen Square in peaceful call for democratic reform. Today with me, our friend who are uh, veterans who uh, came from uh, Paris, Wang Longmeng and Zhang Jian. Could you please uh, stand up? Yeah, they are all Tianmen veterans. Uh, they are being with me today. And the corrupt 
remnants of a totalitarian regime stood on the verge of a collapse, then the unthinkable happened. The world stood by as the tanks and the guns of the government army were turned on the very people they were sworn to defend. And this was done with the acquiescence of the Western powers, whose short-sighted vision and misguided policies condemned the people of China to decades more of humiliation and degradation. Let's not be blinded by the glitter of economic progress in my country. This same regime that gunned down innocent civilians and students in 1989 is the same regime in power today. Years after year, the United States Congressional Committee on China reports that the human rights record of this same regime in China is one of the worst in the world. This is the same regime that is now pursuing cultural genocide on our Tibetan, Uyghur, and Mongolian brothers and sisters. This is the same regime whose foreign policies and models of repression enabled the morally bankrupt regimes of uh, North Korea, Iran, and Vietnam to suck the freedom and dignities from their people. I think I'm running out of time. I, let me conclude. In my conclusion, I propose that we take a first step here by calling for a new direction of the world democracies, that we call for foreign policies that can make measurable progress on human rights, the basis for the progress on all other issues from trade to culture exchanges. At the very least, this new foreign policy must tie progress in bilateral relations with progress in the actual implementation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. At the very minimum, this regime must demonstrate real and measurable progress in the following areas. Internet freedom, release of prison of conscience and tra transparent application of a rule of law, lifting restrictions and halting state interference in the practice of religion and the free exercise of our culture traditions, including the practice of local languages and customs, uh, the right of assembly, peaceful demonstration, and the ability to petition for redress of grievances without reprisal. For those who say that times are different, I say that yes, they are. The universality of human rights has never been more apparent than it is today. If we don't seize the opportunity now, history will judge us harshly. Thank you.